morning friends. I just finished doing my shower, coffee, doing some workout, and now I'm about to start my day with you. We are going to do a vlog today, going through day in the life as a software developer. As some of you may know, I work at IBM, um, and I'm gonna take you along today. I did a while ago a Q&A answering, or sorry, asking what questions you want me to answer about what it's like to be a software engineer, software developer, and I'm gonna go through my day and answer some of those questions. But before we get into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Give this video a thumbs up, and okay, let's get into the day. Okay, first things first, here is the current desk setup. Do not mind all of this filming equipment. I was filming a YouTube video yesterday um, and had just been too lazy to take it down. But so as you can see, current desk setup is the Herman Miller chair. I have my two uh, Dell screens. I have my work Mac. I have the new MacBook and I have my old MacBook. So there's a lot of computers going on here. Um, I'm giving my old MacBook away to a friend and then fully um, will be immersed in the new MacBook, which I'm really excited about. Uh, yeah, so I usually start standing up um, with my desk mount and then sit down later throughout the day. Okay, so I'm going to break down my day for you. Every day is a bit different, but just really how it's kind of structured out anyways. Um, and so you can kind of get a sense of what a day looks like for me typically. So once I start sitting down in my office to work, I have my first meeting every morning at 9 a.m. or sorry, 9.30 a.m. It's a stand-up meeting that just goes through what we worked on yesterday, what we are working on today, and if we have anything blocking us. So anything that is stopping us from doing our work. And for those of you who don't know, I am currently full-time working from home. That will change next month though, and I'm very excited to take you with me into office and all of that. But for right now, I'm working fully remote from home. Ever since I started at IBM, which is almost two years now, I've been fully from home, um, started with the pandemic, which is crazy how time has flown by. Anyways, after my 9.30 meeting, what I will do is, uh, depending on the day, if it's a day where it's a lot of meetings, it's a little bit harder to structure out my day. But if it's a day like today where I don't have I think I have like one other meeting actually, and that's it. Um, I block off time to do specific tasks. So for me right now, I'm working on a feature um, that's a lot of front end work. So I do both front end back end development, but for the current project I am on, it is mostly front end. So working in Angular right now and um, building out this feature, which has been really, really interesting. So I'm gonna block off from 10 till noon today to work on my feature and just get like a huge start on that. So um, we work usually in sprints. So you want to, we're always in sprints. So for example, two week sprints, so you have to get your ticket or your feature that you're working on done within that time period. So I always like to get a head start on it. Um, so that I can get it to QA as soon as possible and then help out others or uh, review PRs. Okay, I'm just taking a break from working for a bit. Um, it's almost lunchtime which I'm so excited about, but I wanted to sit down with you uh, because one question I got asked that I think is really interesting is although, and I really like how this question was framed and it was, although you can't necessarily show what you are working on at IBM, could you give us a sense of similar features or problems that you work on to get a sense of the level of difficulty? And the level of difficulty is a hard one to to answer, I guess, but to give you kind of some examples, and these are very, very high level examples, so please don't take them literally that this is all I do at work, but for example, on a front end project, you might be asked to build a specific modal or um, update the UI or change the UI or implement an API from the back end, different things like that. So the difficulty ranges and how it is done for some companies, not all, but some companies is, there is grooming sessions that are held weekly and you vote on the difficulty of tickets. So if the ticket is really difficult, it might have a higher number than a ticket. When I say ticket, I mean new feature. So 
feature that isn't implemented in the code base yet. Different companies call them different things, but that's what I call them. So if you are just starting out at a company, they aren't going to give you a feature that has a high rating for difficulty. They're going to give you a very low rating. For example, for me, when I first started out, I think my first ticket was the easiest level ticket. And it was to, I don't, this isn't actually what it was, but it was to change the color on a button or something like so easy. And then from there, they'll give you different defects to work on. So you can really see what's wrong with the code or figure, you have to figure out what's wrong. Um, a defect meaning something that's like a bug. And it's a great way to really learn the code base as well by working on different bugs. So they're not gonna throw you in the deep end and the difficulty really ranges on your experience. So you might work at Google and be asked to change a color of a button. It doesn't go based on company, the difficulty of work. It goes based on who you are and your seniority. for the morning it's around 12 p.m now and i'm just putting on my shoes because i am going to go i have food here but i feel like i really need to get out of the house for a little bit so i'm gonna go for a walk it's really nice out here today and go get a matcha latte and i will answer some questions as i'm walking because we will multitask <laughs> This is my outfit today, which no one cares, but it is a Kith sweatsuit. I really like it. It's super comfy, and this is what I'm going on public bike. Okay, so I'm going to continue answering some questions. Hopefully I don't get super embarrassed by um, people seeing me filming um, in public, but I'm doing it for you. Okay, so one question I got asked is for the first day of a new job, what should I feel prepared about or what should I come prepared with? And I think that's a great question. I think we overthink this way too much, or at least I do anyways, and I thought I needed to be master of the programming language that I was going to be working in. Uh, just feeling like I needed to know everything when in reality, especially when you are starting a new role, they're not expecting you to come in knowing everything. On average, they say it takes around, I think three months for someone to actually pick up the full code base. So don't go in expecting or thinking that you should pick up the full code base in like a week. if possible ask for the onboarding documents early it's a great way to kind of get a head start on things is having those documents that you can kind of read up on um, you know their onboarding process and their procedures and all of that but at the end of the day just be mentally prepared to ask as many questions as possible they're expecting you to do that you're new to the company so just don't go in thinking you need to have it all figured out I just got my matcha latte, mission successful. Sorry, I know the lighting, there we go, you can see me now. Um, isn't, and it's also going to be bright for another few minutes here. But another question I got asked by a few of you is, uh, do you have to work overtime as a software engineer, as kind of anyone in the tech industry is overtime very common? And I think this varies based on individual experiences. Um, but for me, I definitely don't find I do. I mean, if I do, it's a very rare case. Um, on average, it's nine to five. I work from home, so it could be eight to four. It could be 10 to six, but I just kind of like the standard nine to five. As far as being on call, that is more common, um, especially in a lot of companies. For myself, I don't have to go on call too often uh, based on the, the work we are doing currently, but there has been times where I've been on call throughout the night or on weekends. Right now, that's not the case, but sometimes that's the case. I would say more often no than yes on that one though. Get back 
home and start coding again. Just got back from my walk and my lunch and I decided I'm going to finish this video after I am done work, um, answering a few more of your questions. This afternoon, I'm going to continue working on the feature I told you about that I'm working on. And I have a, what meeting do I have today? We have grooming today. So voting, as I mentioned earlier, voting on different tickets uh, for difficulty. And then I will answer some more of your questions. Okay, we are going to sit down and um, finish this Q&A because I feel like it's time. It's time, Tiffany. I've been putting it off. Okay, so let's get into it. The questions I have yet to answer for you. There's a lot, so I'm not going to be able to answer them all, but you get the idea. Um, okay. Do you feel like you're able to have good work-life balance, if that's important to you? Uh, what percentage of your day is working independently versus in meetings? Okay, these are all really great questions. Okay, so the answer to the first one, do I feel like I have a good work-life balance? It is so important to me, first of all, like the most important thing. And yes, I do. I feel like this might not be for everyone at every company, but for me, I have amazing work-life balance. I work nine to five and then once 5 p.m. hits, I don't want to say every day, but most days I'm able to totally turn off my computer. Um, I structure my days out in a way that I can kind of balance, um, you know, doing some emails for Tiffin Tech uh, at lunch hour. Maybe I'll spend half an hour doing some Tiffin Tech stuff in the evening, but it's fun for me, so it's a little bit different. But as far as my developer job goes, yes, I have amazing work-life balance. Um, I don't work overtime. There will be times throughout the year where I'm on call, but it's not a regular thing for me. For some developers, it is. For some, it isn't. Depends on your company and product you are working on, but there are tons of companies out there that don't uh, ever do on call, so it's not a requirement. Um, percentage of my day that is working independently versus in meetings, it varies. So typically, not always, but typically, the more senior you are, the more meetings you will be in. Um, I would say I'm at the intermediate level, hoping to get senior level next year, promotion, hopefully. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it really varies on the level of uh, role you are at. But basically for me, I think for all people who are coding roles, mostly you are working more often than not independently versus in meetings, but it is very collaborative work as well. You are working with designers, product managers, um, you're working with business analysts. So I love it because I get to, you know, block out hours a day just to code, but then I also have lots of interactions with people. So I don't feel completely isolated. Okay. This is a good question. Um, what does my company, the company I work at IBM think about your content or if you talked about it? Um, so yes, I made that very to everyone's knowledge when I first started that I also am a content creator and Everyone has been so supportive of it, which is amazing. Um, I think it's because of the content I put out. It's to help and encourage others. So it's just been really supportive from everyone, which is just so awesome. Oh, here's a good question. How did you feel to work in a big company without a CS degree? Does it really matter? Uh, that's a great question. From my experience, it does not matter. It's more so about being able to show the skills, show your knowledge versus just having a piece of paper. Obviously CS is not just any degree, it's not just a piece of paper, but saying that as long as you can show your experience or if you don't have experience, your skills, that's all that matters. And I've spoke about this in a recent video too, that a lot of the big companies actually taken away that you need specifically a CS degree uh, to get into a coding role, which I think is just amazing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not, I think from the outside looking in, maybe it seems like a big deal, but in the tech world, as long as you can show your experience, you are fine. Okay, I know I always do this. I always go over with my questions, but I feel like this video is gonna be so long if I don't stop here. So I'm going to stop this video here. I'm going to go out for dinner with a girlfriend tonight. We are going to go get, I don't know what food we're going to get. We're meeting downtown. I don't, we haven't decided yet, but it'd be nice just to get out of the house for a little bit and then Paul will come home and be with the dogs. But I hope you found this video really helpful and valuable about 
a day in my life. Um, I feel like it was a really boring day, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and answering some of your questions. Uh, but if I didn't answer them, please leave them down in the comments because I always do my best to respond to your comments. So leave your questions down below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.